And to that end, and you might have heard some of this earlier from Neela, the, the Open Daylight um, project surveyed the, their own community in June to get an understanding of, of the level of adoption and the level of intent. And the findings from that are pretty, pretty interesting. Firstly, we found that the, you know, we were saying the time for deployment is now. More than 70% of those surveyed, 73 to be precise, said that they either have or are intending to deploy with Open Daylight as their controller within the next 12 months. 73% of the community, and it wasn't a small sample size, it was 128 members. Across that membership was a really good partitioning or split of end customer type, from the telecom service providers to those who are involved in enterprise networking through to the research and academia. Across that spread, 73% either had or intended to deploy open daylight in their solutions or in their, in their SDN deployments within the next 12 months. And we ask ourselves, you know, what's underpinning that? Is that proving to us that a particular direction, a set of intents, the strategic intent of an effort like Open Daylight, is it resonating? Interoperability as a standard tenant, openness, a reliance and dependence on a community of development and open source. Those are the resonant themes that are causing the end user community to gravitate toward what Open Daylight provides. A further question then asked of that audience or of that community base was, well, what are the primary use cases that you're intending to deploy with? What are, what are the top five that matter to you uh, in terms of your utilization of open daylight? What are you trying to enable with it? And within that, there's another interesting set of key findings. More than 70% of them called out NFV as the was one of the top five primary use cases that they wanted to deploy with ODL. NFV. What's important about that is that, again, because the demographic was so spread, that NFV is finding its way beyond just the environs of the service provider in the classic telco land and into multiple other networking use cases and networking deployments. And within that, open daylight has become a significant resonant theme for an open source controller. Very exciting. Beyond that were other use cases like cloud orchestration, and more than 50% of the had, had cloud orchestration within their top five. And in many cases, this is the interaction between Open Daylight and OpenStack as the orchestrator of choice in how they're going to implement cloud orchestration. And again, it's a resonant theme across each of the demographics. In fact, what was really interesting from the survey is how consistent the top five use cases were across the different uh, demographics of, of, an, of end user that was responding to the survey. So the time for deployment has ex increased in terms of speed. The, their, their intent to deploy within the next 12 months has increased, and the applications and use cases that they're focused on are becoming very, very clear as to where the value and where the, in, the return is, is going to occur from deployments with open daylight. So when we consider the approach we've taken within Intel, We've been very specific about looking at the deconstruction of what we would think as, as the, the solution stack required to deploy a fully functional SDN NFV stack. And I use the two terms interchangeably or, or, or collectively because, as we see, the open daylight and SDN constructs are very much applying to the ability to develop and deploy network functions virtualization solutions. And within the stack, our focus has been at multiple ingredient layers from the platform level investments we make in our silicon for support of the necessary levels of offload and acceleration, through to the software investments we're making in, in, in efforts like the Data Plane Development Kit, or DPDK, the acceleration of virtual switching with DPDK, and upstreaming those optimizations to the, to the appropriate projects like openvswitch.org, and so on up through the stack as we create incremental capabilities and want to enable the, the optimization of those capabilities to be realized. Key within this is how you then interface with the different projects and communities that are involved in it. And we have been very focused on the development of our ecosystem and our partner base to enable the community to really flourish and evolve and become very effective at delivering to the solution and delivering to the, to the requirements that are demanded from, by the customer base. But just focusing on the ingredients in and of themselves is not enough. What really is required is how these ingredients are brought together to create the concept of a solution. And our focus here has been on the work required to integrate and validate these components together, 
understand where there are bottlenecks and performance optimization opportunities and apply our attention and our support of our partner base to addressing those and evolving and, and addressing some of those challenges and optimizations because we all of us want to see the promise of next generation transformed, fully functionally software defined networking to occur. Specific to Open Daylight, our focus for the next release, for Beryllium, really boils down to, to three main areas. We have a focus specifically in the, the, the three S's and the P's, or S3 P's, as it said, the scalability, the security, and the stability and performance of the, of, of the release. And our focus and contributions here have been really boiled down to, to two specific components of it. One is the, the test and, uh, and characterization infrastructure, the project for, for, for testing and characterization of open daylight. And we've worked very collaboratively with partners here, with Brocade, with HP, and with Red Hat, specifically in the project to characterize behavior and performance of open daylight and ensure that it is fully functional and fully capable of supporting real-world demanding network applications and implementations. And you can break that activity in, into two flavors or two streams. One that looks northbound at the integration into OpenStack for the orchestration of the, of the functions and of the services. And the, the integration of the test suite into, into OpenStack to ensure that it's fully functional. And the second is the southbound view of integration with Open Virtual Switch. And specifically OVSDB and indeed OpenFlow as the control plane protocol for, for, for managing it. So both of those efforts are, are, are focused on ensuring that the, the, the uh, stability and scalability and security of open daylight can continue to evolve and that our, we're making our material contributions to enabling that to occur. Here at the conference tomorrow on Wednesday, we're co-leading a session with, uh, with HP specific to the evolution and, and requirements that we believe will, be, will ha need to be evolved in the testing infrastructure for Beryllium and I'd invite you to, to, to attend that session. The second of our focus for Brilliant then is around use case enablement, specifically looking at service function chaining, which has really caught the attention of the NFV industry in, in, in the concept of daisy chaining multiple functions together and using open daylight as the controller to provision those functions such that they are aligned to the best capabilities and resources available within the infrastructure as to where they are supported, how the policies are defined and how they can be enforced. The, uh, optimal placement of workloads and the, uh, as a link to the orchestration, this EPA concept or enhanced platform awareness in OpenStack is the coupling and the link here between the enabling of ser network service function chaining and the role of the controller and orchestrator in how they, they operate and interoperate together. Again, tomorrow, some of our lead architects will be here and they'll, and they'll be speaking specifically about the work we're doing in service function chaining and how we're looking to evolve and enhance open daylight to enable that to, to continue to occur into the future and an opportunity for you to, to join with the team at that time. Also, as we think about how service function chaining will evolve out into the future, Uri Elzer, who's our board member in Open Daylight and member of the TSC, will be specifically talking about the evolution of service function chaining tomorrow as well. So again, invite you to, to interact with the team because the reason we are so involved with and heavily supportive of Open Daylight is because we want to apply our, our competence, we want to apply our our knowledge and our expertise and our technologies and we want to interact with the community and enable the, the, the evolution of, of open daylight to, to happen as quickly and, and as effectively as possible. The third of our focus areas then for, 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 for Beryllium specifically is in then the enablement of a vertical NFV stack through the community efforts. One of the, the interesting dynamics occurring this week is that while Open Daylight Summit is happening here, Etsy NFV is also occurring at the same time just across town. Another open source effort or another open standard open source focused effort for the evolution of a transformed infrastructure. Why is it interesting? Well, it's coincident in terms of time. Why is it important though is because each of these projects, and we are many of us members of multiple projects and efforts, need to interact together, need to, to maintain alignment with each other as much as is possible to ensure that we can collectively develop a solution stack that enables a fully capable and rugged uh, implementation in the hands of the end customers who are going to deploy next generation networking with all of these parts. So to that end, our focus here is specifically around the community alignment and the interaction with OPNV, with the open virtual switching, and of course the work we do within our own data plane development kit. 
we converge these efforts together in our reference architecture, which we've been calling the Open Network Platform. And this is where we bring together the alignment of all of those open source project ingredients, the contributions we've made to them, and the optimizations we're making in our own hardware and software into a form that's consumable by our, by our partner base, by our customers as a reference upon which they are building solutions. And we're excited by the pace of, of next generation solutions that are increasingly taking advantage of the work we've been doing in, in, in ONP. Also, within Open Daylight, a solutions directory was created, uh, launched uh, about a month ago. And within that solution directory, ONP is part of the offering that Intel brings to bear. It's one of the components that's highlighted within that solution directory as our contribution. But it doesn't stop there. Just working on the ingredients, supporting the standardization efforts, working with the, the integration of those uh, components into references is only the first sort of part of the journey. The collaboration with key partners is a critical component, and we've been working with multiple partners, specifically in this case with Cisco in the integration of a network service function chain, taking advantage of Open Daylight as the controller to implement the service chain, and NSH as one of the, the technologies within the service chain to best manage the interactivity between the, 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 the various virtual network functions that are involved within it. We demonstrated this in Mobile World Congress and most recently at, a, at the NFV World Congress and we're demonstrating it here at this event as well. We're excited at the prospect of what this POC enables and what it demonstrates and what it portrays because it takes advantage of the underlying foundational technologies in the platform and the critical components that are being enabled in the open source projects like Open Daylight for its implementation. So we're excited at the work we've been doing there. But collaboration and partnering is a key component of how we've gone about our approach to the market. And to that end, I'm really pleased to, to welcome Bala Thekadath on stage. Bala is the product, Director of Product Marketing in the, in the Cloud and IP Business Unit within Ericsson to talk a little bit about some of the work we've been doing together. Bala, Thank you're you, welcome. John. Thank you, John. Good morning. And, uh, Thank you, John. It's been a great honor to share the stage here today with you and for the opportunity to share some insights on uh, what we are seeing as we take SDN into service provider networks for deployment. You know, I, I remember... Oh, okay. I remember attending a session a couple of years ago at Broadband World Forum in Amsterdam, I think, and a gentleman there was talking about how do we know that a technology is matured? And his, his view was that we know that a technology is mature and mainstream when we no longer talk about it. We just don't talk about it. It, it becomes part of day-to-day -day operations. It's in the network. It becomes a new norm for the network. Now, we're not there with SDN, but what we are doing here collaboratively is actually building the stepping stones to take SDN to that place. Specifically, uh, you know, innovation for it to be adopted in networks to accelerate that, it needs collaboration. And that's what we are doing here. Uh, on service function chaining, Ericsson had a solution for service chaining even before the Open Daylight project was kicked off. But what we are doing here today now is actually accelerating that concept, creating momentum around that concept, making it applicable to a wide range of infrastructure implementations that is the service provider network of today. It's not a point solution like Neela said. We don't need point solutions. So what we are doing, the work that we are doing along with Intel here and other partners here, is actually taking those concepts, making it applicable in a broader framework to a wide range of network infrastructure. And this work we are not doing just at ODL. We are doing this work in a, in, a, in a range of uh, collaborative communities, both downstream from the SDN layer and upstream. And, uh, talking about um, upstream and downstream from the SDN layer actually brings me to this slide. Now, I know this slide is very busy compared to some of the slides John had. I thought about uh, uh, simplifying it, but then I let it be. I thought, you know, this could be a metaphor for some of the reality that we have to face. There's no question that SDN is well on its way to being deployed in service provider networks. There's no question on the technical feasibility of the solution, especially the ODL-based solution, in terms of its uh, um, scalability or the functionality or the multi-vendor nature of the solution. But we have to remember that operators are going to embark on a single transformation journey. It's going to include SDN. It's going to involve 
NFV is going to involve OSS transformation, it's going to involve the cloud. And this a lot, you know, in order to create consumable services out of the capabilities that we are putting into the network with our work here, we have to make sure that different parts of the operator infrastructure also fall into place. And that includes you know, the, the network and the data center infrastructure layer, where again, there's a lot of collaborative efforts happening, both at uh, initiatives like OPNFE and even one-on-one -on -one with, with, between uh, um, like what we have with Intel and other, other partners. There is the, uh, the management in the orchestration layer where we are actually creating these uh, services across a hybrid infrastructure. Some of it is SDN enabled, some of it is not. And it's going to be a little while before it's going to be completely SDN enabled. And then, most important, the layer where we are exposing these capabilities to end users. You know, uh, there is a lot of effort on advisory groups and user forums where people are discussing how do we actually monetize these services or monetize these capabilities that we are bringing into the network. So all of these pieces need to fall into place for SDN to reach that place. So we have to be mindful of that fact. And underlying the decisions that operators are making for each of these layers are four key factors. One, you know, what is the business priority? Is it CapEx reduction? Is it OpEx reduction? Is it new revenue? Is it better user experience? What is the status of their infrastructure life cycle at that particular point for that particular layer? You know, is this something that they have just put in and do not want to take a risk of changing? Um, is it something that is at the end of its life cycle and prime for, uh, for a change? What is the status of the operational processes? How mature are they? How open are that to change? How flexible are those? And then the organizational competence and the capabilities. How easy is it for them to change the culture? So uh, when all of these things come into picture, we will have true deployment of SDN into the network. And so whatever work we are doing here as a community, I think it if we keep in mind the place we are in the broader infrastructure and the, um, and, and the key factors that our customers take into consideration when thinking about this, we will make it much easier for them to make that decision to take SDN and accelerate that deployment much faster into their network. John. Great, thank you, Bala. So in summary, the momentum behind SDN is clearly underway, has been now for a number of months. The evidence from the recent survey from Open Daylight shows the intent uh, and the timeline. That's the exciting piece. We're in the year of deployment. I've often talked about this as an industry that was in the year of trial and test and POC. We are truly moving from that phase, notwithstanding there's a lot of work to do. As Bala mentioned, many of the interoperabilities and integration challenges that, that are in front of us off, off might be the, 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 the hardest work is ahead of us. But, but the momentum is there to ensure that, that this journey can be continued. We will continue to play our role to, to in the community, partnering with, with our partner base and with you in the community to ensure that the right kinds of solutions can be developed and the technology underpinning it within Open Daylight can be matured and enabled and the integration with other projects, which is a key requirement, will continue to, to evolve. And lastly, I just invite you to engage with the representatives that are here at this event to, 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 to walk through and to think through the challenges that might, might exist or the whiteboard, the solutions that you're considering, and, and, and spend time to interact because the value of the community projects is in the networking that can occur between the people involved, the sharing of experiences, the learnings, the, re, the elimination of the reinvention of a challenge that somebody else has already overcome. That's the value because we're ultimately through an open source based project trying to speed the, the innovation of solutions to the market in a way for networking that we have never seen before. So we're, we have that opportunity now to capitalize on and the proof of life that this is something that can be successful already exists. So it's no longer a question of if. It's now the when. We're in the phase of speed of deployment and speed of, of development. So with that, I'd like to summarize, just say thank you for your attention again and enjoy the remainder of the conference.